Hello, today I'd like to show you how to make a wonky wonky triangle block. Um, so I've previously done a video, this is the wonky wonky triangle block and the reason I've done the wonky wonky is because we've kind of got two rounds going on. So I have shown you in a previous video, Quilting Tips and Techniques 049, how to make a wonky triangle. So just a single sort of round. Um, and we started on that one with an 8 inch square and came down to 6.5 inches. But I'm going to set that to one side now because today we're doing the wonky wonky. And so I'm starting with my squares here. Uh, they're 9.5 inches cut. And I'm actually going to cut four at a time. So I've layered four 9.5 inch squares all with the right sides of the fabric facing up. And this is going to trim down when we finished it to a 7.5 inch. So we're going to lose two inches in all these seams and things, plus it will need trimming a little bit. So I just thought I'd show you how I'm going to go about that. So I've got my nine and a half inch squares and I've got, as I said, four of them with the right side facing up of your fabric and I'm going to start cutting. So we start off with a nice square, we cut it all up and then we make it square again. So it, it, it's a very random sort of cut. You can you can affect the size of your strips, your triangles, everything by the, by how much you cut. And just remember each time it's going to come in because you're going to lose some of the seam allowance. So you don't want to um, have it too close out because you're going to lose a little bit. You don't want to be too close in because it'll make your triangle very small unless that's what you're wanting, of course. So it's a little bit random. So I'm just going to cut across here. And then I'm just going to move that to one side. Don't take it away. Don't change any direction. Just move it a bit. And then, so I'm actually going to go in a clockwise direction all the way into the center. So then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to cut out to there. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to cut right the way across there. And so that's pretty much what we did for the wonky triangle, but now we're going to do another round of cutting. So just leave everything in position if you're able to, and just but just move it enough away that you're not going to be um, cutting into it. So remember, we're still going around in a um, clockwise direction. Now remember, don't come too close because you've got to use, quarter of an inch has got to disappear into a seam allowance. So don't forget to allow for that in your cutting because you, you need to have two seam allowances off there. So you want to come across enough that there's a little bit of fabric left to show the color. Okay. And then the last cut, again, remember I'm coming round clockwise. And it varies every time if you do it this way, which is kind of part of its charm. So what we've got now is all these pieces. How exciting is that? Try and keep them all sitting on the board though, so that you know where everything goes, because it will get very confusing if you have to start sorting out where everything goes again. So just sort of bring them into an, you can bring them right in again if you'd like to, if it makes you feel better. We're just going to work from the piles like this. So with the center one, we're going to take the center top triangle, keeping it right side up and putting it to the bottom. We're going to leave that middle round just as it is, but on the outside round, we're going to take two off the top and put them to the bottom. So you can see what's happening here. We're getting these three different colors going. And I'm going to be able to make four blocks with this pile because I've got four squares there. And so those colors will kind of all go through. So that's what we're going to end up with. And now we're going to start sewing them together. And it's quite good to press as you go because it's kind of fiddly sewing. It's on funny angles and things. And all our pieces now are all going to be a little bit long and we'll need to trim as we go as well. So I'm going to start with the center triangle. So where we've cut going clockwise in, we're now going to start sewing in exactly the reverse direction. So we start with the triangle and this last strip that we cut off and we're going to lay them right sides together and just position that triangle somewhere in the middle there because it's all going to be trimmed down and I'm going to sew my quarter inch seam along there now. These are quite fun to make, quite good for using up some bits and pieces. Now I'm going to go to the iron and I'm going to press that seam over. Hold that the way. Okay, so that was that one. Now I'm going to pick up my next piece. Again, right sides together. 
Now this little bit is sticking out here that we just had. Um, I probably wouldn't trim that off until I've done this next seam. So you want to centre it so that it comes past both parts of the fabric there. And again, do your quarter inch seam allowance. And just all the way along, just ignore this bit that's sticking out. Your quarter inch is the piece that you're sewing on. Right. So now what I would probably do is I would probably just trim that before I press it. So that bit that was sticking out there, making life unnecessary, is now unnecessary to us. So just trim that little bit off. And now I'll go and press this seam. Okay, so that was our second piece. So now we want to put this third piece on. So the same thing, we're going to flip that over so that they're right sides together. And that probably matters to me more than you at the moment because I'm using batiks and you can't always tell. And now again, centre that. This is quite a bit longer because we've pulled in quite a bit with those other couple of seams. So just position that on there somewhere so that it's well and truly covered. These bits are going to stick out. We'll trim them off after we've done the sewing. So we're actually, a quarter inch is the piece that we're sewing on. The seam comes in on the edge from. Um, you can chain piece these if you want to. If you're confident, you could have just chain pieced all of those first bits, etc. Um, for me, I probably like to make this block one at a time. Um, just so I don't get confused. And now I'm just going to trim those bits off that we don't need anymore. And back to the iron to press this seam open. Or well, not the seam open, but press the piece over. Okay. So that was that piece. So we're getting there. So now um, my next piece would be back around here again. So I'm going to bring that over. Again, I'm going to centre that somewhere in there. And so my seam allowance. And again, I'm going to trim those bits off that are sticking out. You don't have to trim these off, but they do add extra bulk to the block, so it's kind of neater without them. And press my seam over. Okay, now my next piece is this one. And again, we're going to flip that over so it's right sides together. And we're going to sew that seam, having centred it so there's a bit sticking out at each end. It doesn't have to be exactly central, but it just needs to be covered at both ends. And nearly done. It hasn't taken so very long. Okay, let's trim those bits off. Press that seam and now there's just one more piece left to go on there. So we'll pop that on so the wonky triangle was fun but the wonky wonky is Obviously double the fun. And if you just take it carefully step by step, it's not so hard to do. Um, and I'd suggest that if you've got these pieces that are here sitting on a tray of some sort or on a piece of paper, if you're not going to be able to get all the sewing done in one go, you may want to um, consider that so that they don't get disturbed ready for when you can sew the rest of them. But you would need to, I've done it with four fabrics here, but you would need at least three, obviously, because there's three fabrics in each block. So if you were going to cut three fabrics, you'd only need to be making three blocks at a time. 
So I've just trimmed those little bits off there, press that last seam and then we're ready to trim the block. Okay, so these bits here, if you do have to pick them up, I suggest that you pick them up in the pretty much the order that we cut them in so that we can move them out of the way and not disturb the order of them. Now I've got my block here, which is kind of nicely wonky, and we're going to trim that down. You should be able to get a seven and a half inch block out of that. And I'm lining up my ruler. I'm not necessarily making sure. Sometimes with these wonky blocks, your fabrics go off grain a little bit. That's kind of the nature of this kind of block. So I, I can actually just fit my seven and a half inch on there and I'm quite happy with where that's sitting. So I'm just going to trim now two sides. So I've got it so that it's extending a little bit beyond the seven and a half inch line on both of those sides and also on these two open edges. So I'm going to trim the side off first. Then I'm going to come across the top here and trim that off. So now I've got two edges that are trimmed. I'm going to turn that around and reposition my ruler again, this time so that my seven and a half inch line on my ruler lines up with the edge of the block. And I've got just a little bit to trim off here, which is fine, that's all I need. And again, across the other edge. So there we've got a seven and a half inch wonky wonky triangle block. And I think that's kind of fun. It's a nice way to use colors. It can be quite graphic with just sort of color rather than a lot of pattern or you could have some particular something in the middle which you're outlining there's any number of, of things you can do um, and so I've actually I've done a few so you can just see what a few look like laid out together you can turn the blocks around you could try and have them kind of similar with all the triangles basically going the same way but my idea would be to to rotate them a bit so that they all look completely wonky um, and I think that's kind of fun. You can have all these different things going on with those triangles. So you might not want to do a whole quilt of them. You might want a panel of them. You might want a strip of them. You might just want one and something else going on in the quilt. But that was just another idea for um, how to make a wonky wonky triangle.